Today we're going to talk about signs you're financially stable even if you don't feel like you are. Because when most people hear the term financially stable, they think this. This is where to put your money every time you get your paycheck so you won't go broke using the cherry method. First, you want to put around two to $3,000 a month into your checking accounts or until you have two months of funds to cover for your bills. Next, you want to contribute around $500 a month into a high yield savings account or until you have three to six months of an emergency fund. Next, you want to put around $500 into an employee sponsored account like a 401k until you get the company match. Next, you want to put around five to $700 into your Roth IRA until you hit the contribution limit for the year. Lastly, if you have any extra income, you can continue to contribute into your individual brokerage accounts or taxable brokerage accounts so that you can continue to invest and compound your wealth. And while that's a very, very great thing to strive for, and that was an excellent breakdown the guy in the video did, his name is Steve, by the way, but that's not financially stable. That is levels above being financially stable. So you gotta get there first, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So I'll put together a list of not one, not two, but 20 signs that you're financially stable, even if you don't feel like you are. So if I look over here, all I'm doing is looking at my list. Number one, you're watching this video, and I'm not even kidding when I say this, when people actually look up content on the internet of how to improve a specific area of their lives, that is a sign that you're ahead of a lot of people. The fact that you care so much to even click on the video, even if you didn't search for it in the search bar, the fact that you clicked on a video that is specific to your situation and specific to signs that you're financially stable, you're checking in to see how you stack up against what I'm putting in this video. And my videos have a lot of little things inside of them that can help you become more financially stable. For example, in my description of every single video, there's a high yield savings account link, an individual brokerage account link, and a Roth IRA account link. And so if you don't have these accounts set up yet and you go through my links, you actually get stocks included with the brokerage accounts. And for the high yield savings account, you'll get more interest every month. So that stuff is gonna slowly but surely help you build your money. So that's why watching this video is a sign that you're financially stable. And since we have 20 different signs, which I could literally make a video out of every single point that I make in this video, I want you to know that you're gonna to wanna to stick around for the whole video. One, because it's my birthday and that would be all I want from you is to hit the subscribe button, watch the video all the way through, and then just leave me a happy birthday in the comments. That's all I want. And two, because this is gonna start very simple and basic, and then it's gonna to get to more advanced things that can really help you and add value to your life so you can see what it truly takes to become financially stable. And so if you are financially stable, it'll give you reassurance. And if you're not, it's gonna give you actionable steps that you can take to get there. So we're gonna jump into number two you have financial goals. And of course, sounds very basic, but you have financial goals, you're gonna do certain things differently than someone who doesn't have financial goals. And you would probably say, well, everybody has financial goals. Not really, because it's one thing to say you want something and do absolutely nothing about it, but it's another thing to say you want something and actually get a sheet of paper out or, or on your phone, like in today's time, it's 2024, on your phone and your notes app, actually putting things that you want. And that financial goal could be something as simple as, I want a car, I want a house. That's gonna make you think in a different way. You're gonna set up a savings account. You're probably gonna save up an emergency fund. So in between your pursuit of you getting your financial goals and, and getting to where you wanna be, you're also setting up savings so that one, you can get what you want, and two, so you have a little bit of financial security along the way. And you're gonna be less likely to do things like impulse buying or being overly excessive about your spending in any way because you have a goal to reach and you're looking at the long term. Which leads me to number three. Another sign that you're financially stable is that you're living below your means. You're not trying too hard to spend too much money and you're well aware of where your money should be going. You probably have numbers in your head as far as, okay, on rent, I'm not gonna spend over $1,800 because I know if I do, now money's gonna start getting tight in other areas and I wanna have a little more financial freedom as far as what I can do with my money right now. You probably have a number in your head of, I will not have a car note of over $500 because if it exceeds $500, now I have to start restructuring my money. And if an emergency decides to pop up, well, I'm just gonna be screwed. I better not get a flat tire, which means you would fall into the same category as someone who is in number four, and that sign is that you have a budget that you follow. And typically it's one of two budgets if you're financially stable or striving to become financially stable. Here's what it is. And that's either the 50-30-20 rule, which is when you spend no more than 50% of your take-home pay 
on your living expenses, aka your needs. No more than 30% goes towards your wants and at least 20% goes towards your savings. And that doesn't just have to be your savings account or even just your emergency fund. It can be those two as well as your investing accounts or the zero based budget rule, which is my personal favorite. That's when every single dollar for every single month is accounted for, which means you're being extremely intentional about where every dollar goes and you're pretty adamant and you have dollars assigned to savings, investments, and you know exactly how much money is going towards those. And even if you have extra money at the end of the month, you already decide from the beginning, okay, if I get an extra $200 this month, 150 is going into savings, the other 50 is going for fun and hobbies, dates, and, and all that other good stuff. That's a super generic summary, but like I said, I can make videos on these. Today, we're going through the 20 signs that you're financially stable. And the thing about budgeting is it's probably the hardest part to get down, and I think up front, most people, especially if you're in the phase of getting started or adulting that I go over in my other video where I teach a whole course on how to be financially stable, then you definitely need to learn about budgeting and practice budgeting up front. That's probably where most of your time should go towards because that is going to be the great equalizer when it comes to your personal finances and your goals. If you can learn how to budget early on, that is going to put you so far ahead from an early stage. And I do offer one-on-one -on -one consultations to help you improve your budgets and your savings. Just an FYI, links down in the description. Number five, you track your expenses. That's self-explanatory, but doing the work in as simple as it sounds, it is actually pretty difficult to do and keep up with. Even I've gotten into the bad habit of saying, ah, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow ended up being 30 to 60 days later. So I don't recommend that. The whole purpose of tracking your expenses is to do it, you know, week by week. And you can do it manually or you can do it digitally. Like there's multiple ways. There's apps you can download and there's spreadsheets that you can download or create yourself that can track your expenses. But either way, at the beginning, manually is the best way to do it. You know why? Because it sucks. So you're gonna start getting irritated with yourself. Why do I buy this? Now I gotta type this in the computer. I have this conversation with myself at least once a month. So I know a little something about that. Number six, you have your bills automated and you don't have to worry about it. You're not sweating. You're not like, oh, wait a minute. Did, did my rent just get taken out? Did my internet bill just get taken out? Did my phone bill? You know, because everybody has that moment. Well, I think so anyway. I think everybody has that moment in life where they're like, Hmm. I don't really have that much money in my checking account. I hope this bill doesn't come out today. It usually comes out of my bank account on the 15th and it's $100. I only have $50 left in my bank account. So I'm hoping the money doesn't come out till Monday. That gives me some time to move some things around. If you've ever felt like that, I understand. I've 100% been there. But if you're financially stable, you're not worried about that. You're not even thinking about that. You know that you're good to go. And the great thing about automation is something that leads me to number seven. You also have automated your savings account because it is a pain to remember to pay yourself $100 a month or however much you're able to put away for your savings. It is a pain, especially if you have other things popping up or your friends want to go out somewhere and you're like, oh, I have this $100 or however much it costs. It could be $300. It could be $1,000. But it gives you false confidence that you can actually go out and do things but I always say, pay yourself first. That's the most important model to live by. Because if you pay yourself first and then you have money left over, then you don't feel guilty when you go out. But you go out or you go out to a concert or you go traveling or you just buy yourself something really nice. You feel guilty when you look at your bank account and it's about low. But on a serious note, if you're actually able to automate your savings, you're going to be able to save a lot more because you won't be thinking about it. And more importantly, if you're able to automate your savings, that means you have enough money to trust both that you're automating your expenses and you're automating your savings and you still have money left over. So these are all fantastic signs. That's what I want you to strive for if you're not there yet. And if you are there, congratulations. A lot of people take a while to get to that point, which leads me to number eight, your bank account never gets into the negatives because you have that amount of control and you have that amount of money in your accounts so that you don't allow it to get low. And what I'm mainly referring to is your checking account because if any account that you have is gonna be in the negatives, it's probably gonna be your checking. So this shows that you have discipline and that discipline can be in the form of you were able to save so much money or accumulate so much money over a prolonged amount of time or that you just have really good spending habits. Either way, you're financially stable if you're able to do these things. A lot of being financially stable 
is truly your mindset. If you're a stable minded person who's able to make logical decisions with real life resources like money, then you are going to become financially stable even if you're not yet. Which leads me to number nine. Your bills are paid. Hey, my bills, my bills are paid. But you're not living paycheck to paycheck. And this is cumulative. So your expenses are automated. Your savings are automated. Your bank account never goes in the negatives and your bills are paid, but you're not living paycheck to paycheck. For some people that is a dream. And if that's you watching this video right now, I'm here to tell you that dream can most definitely come true. You just have to put the work in and the time in and do the right thing over and over and over and over again and you will 100% get there. And if you are watching this video and you are someone who's living paycheck to paycheck, I do have a few videos that break down how to stop living paycheck to paycheck. I'll link them up here it's in playlist form. It would appear that we have reached number 10. Number 10 is that you've saved up a minimum of $5,000 and I'm not including your checking account or anything else. This is purely your savings account. This is money that you have off to the side and for a lot of us it represents one month worth of expenses. But it's set aside in case of emergency and ideally you don't want to touch it at all. You want to continue adding on to it. But what this isn't is money that you're pulling from your savings over to your checking. I've been guilty of it. Check me out. Watch my wealth journey videos. I straight up let you know if I'm guilty of doing it in every single video. And that's just to let you know up front, your boy ain't perfect. See, for most people, their vices are shiny objects and cool things. For me, it's investing. But that's another story for another day. Speaking of investing, number 10, you're contributing to your 401k monthly and it receives a match. This is pretty much standard with most full-time jobs, but you'd be surprised at the amount of people who do not take advantage of a 401k in general or the 401k match. The money that you're putting in your 401k right now is not getting taxed as it goes in. So before your paycheck even gets taxed, whatever percentage you chose, let's say it's 8%. 8% 8 of your untaxed paycheck is going into your 401k. And then your company says, hey, you know what? For working so hard and being the great person that you are, we're gonna pay you 50% for every dollar that you put in. In other words, for every dollar you put in, I'm putting 50 cents. For every $100 you're putting in, I'm putting in $50. You get me? And so when you look at investments, it pretty much looks like this. It's on an exponential curve over the long term, of course, meaning that your money multiplies. And what the company is doing, they're multiplying your money and by it being invested in an investment account that is secure, that in itself, even though it fluctuates, is also multiplying. And then at the end, when you hit retirement age and you start withdrawing the money, it gets about taxed. But that's how people are able to have millions in their 401k by the time they hit 65 because they've added little by little. And that's why I made that whole video about you do not need a lot of money to be financially stable because it only takes a little bit, just little by little by little. And if you're making these contributions right now, that is a great sign that you're financially stable. And if you don't like getting about tax when you retire, check out the Roth IRA. And this is number 12. Number 12, the sign is you have a Roth IRA that you contribute to regularly. I have not added to my Roth IRA regularly since I got it until literally this year. First year I did 1500, the second year I put absolutely nothing in it. Third year I think it was 2000 and something dollars. And now that it's the fourth year, I've been contributing $500 per month. And then once I hit the six month mark, I was like, I'm doing 700 now because the max that you can contribute to your Roth IRA is $7,000. I'm not saying that you have to max out your Roth IRA every year because not everybody has $7,000 that they're willing to put in the Roth IRA every year because you might have savings or you might have bills or whatever the case is that don't allow you to do that. You, you have other priorities essentially is what I'm saying. But the great thing is, even though your money is taxed when it goes into a Roth IRA, once you pull the money out at retirement age, it does not get taxed. And the reason this is a great sign that you're financially stable is because if you're able to do everything on the list that I just talked about and you have a 401k and a Roth IRA, you have some money at your disposal and you're using it wisely. And when you really think about it, this is how you're making money in your sleep. This is how you're making money when you're not even thinking about it. No one should have to just work all the time for money and exchange the time for money all the time. There should be a trade-off where some of the time you spend working is how you get money, but then on your off time, when you're sleeping, when you're eating, when you're socializing, your accounts are making money as well. Something to think about. Number 13, a hot topic 
on this channel and just the hot topic in the personal finance community, you are paying off your debt in a timely manner or you have no debt. I'm not saying you have to be debt free to be financially stable, but if you are, that's fantastic and that's a fine sign that you're doing well financially and or are financially stable. So good job if that's you. And if you're in debt, and I'll be frank, I'm in debt. Again, watch my wealth journey series. I'll show you my whole personal finance breakdown, but it is by choice because everything I listed on this so far has been more important to me than paying off the particular debt that I have. And I'll explain why. I have student loan debt. The interest rate is super low and the interest that my investments have earned me have been so much more that it literally would not make any sense for me to liquidate my investments and pay off my debt. And debt is not a big thing that's like a dark cloud over my head or a big weight on my shoulders or anything like that. I honestly don't feel it, but I am responsible and and paying it off in a timely manner, just like I said. So I would be in, in that category when it comes to this list. But it means that you care. It means that you care about becoming debt free, having a good credit score if you have credit card debt, and you're not waiting around to just let your debt continue to grow. You're like, nah, even though I can't pay the whole thing off this month, I'm gonna pay half of it. And then next month, I'm gonna pay the other half. Like you have more of an aggressive approach to paying off debt, especially if it's something like credit card debt. But there's nothing wrong with having that same tenacity for student loans either or other forms of debt but yes that is a sign that you're financially stable moving on number 14 you make extra income on the side there's a few forms of this that i mean on the side not everybody has like a talent or a hobby in which they can start making money immediately like for example this youtube channel didn't start generating money for me until like two years of consistently making videos but that could be a way that you make extra money working overtime at work is also another way you could be making extra money on the side because on the side just means when you're not scheduled to be at work so if you decide to sign up for a day of work that you're not originally scheduled to do then you're making that time and a half you're effectively making extra money on the side. That's just how I see it. Or you do something entrepreneurial related on the side where you have a side business of some sort, whether it's internet based or labor based, something like that. But this is a good sign because you want to have a better lifestyle and you're willing to put in extra hours outside of your work hours to make that happen. And if you're curious, here's some ways that I made extra money on the side. So when I was in college, I was on the college drum line at my university and we were a pretty big deal. And I was like, you know what? It would be cool if I could teach students who are aspiring to be on their high school drum line or college drum line how to play the drums properly and so that they would have less of a learning curve than I did back then. And I made easily an extra $200 a month after that. And on top of that, I worked overtime at work. So that would be another way I made extra income. And as I moved across the country to a different state for more work-life balance, I was able to create this YouTube channel. I was able to create my website, my one-on-one -on -one consultation. I was able to write my book. Life has been about good and I have some, some more projects that I'm working on as well. So yeah, I would say get creative and lean into that if you haven't already because this economy is absolutely ridiculous and it's almost a requirement to figure out how to make some extra money even if it is as simple as working overtime at work. Just know that no extra income, especially overtime at work, is going to be guaranteed. Number 15, your salary goes up yearly. I know that seems like a simple basic expectation that most of you probably have for your jobs, but you'd be surprised at how many jobs do not give yearly raises or give really crappy yearly raises. For all your hard work, you get 1%. I'd be about hot. Y'all gotta learn if y'all ain't getting what you deserve and you're not seeing that yearly raise, you might wanna consider getting something else. That's my hot take for today. I'm gonna leave it at that. But when your salary goes up yearly, it's a great sign because it typically helps knock some of the edge off of inflation. I'm not saying it's gonna compete with inflation or even exceed inflation because most of the time it doesn't. What that will do is make it a little bit easier for you so that you're not completely taken aback and thrown off guard by inflation. In a way that you can ensure that your money continues to go up and that your salary does go up every single year, and it's not promised or anything, but it is, it's a pretty good way to secure this. It's showing up to work every day. That's number 16. In my 
career, which hasn't been that long, by the way. I'm 28. I started working full time when I was 21 and I've been in management this whole time. I have been baffled by the amount of people who will just call off work for anything. I'm not even talking about emergencies. Some people, they'll wake up, they'll, they'll just be like, oh, I woke up with the headache, so I ain't going to work today. Uh, stub my toe. I ain't going to work today. Oh, you know what? I got a little sniffle. Allergies. I ain't going to work today. And then they won't get paid for that day and they'll miss multiple days and they'll get into the habit of doing it. The thing about habits is once you get into the habit of not doing certain things, like going to work, your mind signals to you, you know what? It's okay to do that. We can continue to miss work. Maybe not every day, but once a week, a couple times a month, and your money is gonna get eaten away by that bad decision in addition to inflation. I obviously feel very strongly about this, so I'm just gonna move on to the next topic before this ends up being an hour long video. Number 17, this is where we get to the fun part. Number 17, you can treat yourself every now and then. You can buy yourself a nice watch every now and then. You're like, sure, I could afford to buy myself a watch that's $500 or more every month, but I decide to only do it every once in a while, maybe when it's my birthday. But what this shows is one, self-control, but two, it also shows that you understand what it's like to be balanced. You can't be all about work. Sometimes there has to be some play involved. Sometimes you have to get yourself something that you really wanted or do something that you really want to do whether it's traveling somewhere, going somewhere nice, spending a little bit of money or a lot of money, depending on your situation, and just enjoying life. Because the thing about life is we, we work for the people that we care about. And even if you're single and it's like just you, you care about yourself, right? You get what I'm saying? Like, it's not all about work, work, work. You enjoy something in life. For me, I used to enjoy video games, so when I worked for a little while, I would get a new game or a new console or something every once in a while. Now I'm not really big on video games, but what I'm huge on is martial arts. I've been training Muay Thai for something like a year and a half now, and my guilty pleasure is I like buying boxing gloves. But whatever your hobby is, it could be golf, it could be dance, it could be just chilling by the lake, whatever it is, like there are no wrong answers. You should be able to do something nice for yourself every now and then, and that is a great sign that you're financially stable because not only do you have money in your account you can spend some of it enjoy yourself and not be hurt by it number 18 you're prioritizing your health and this arguably should have been way higher up on the list but i told you this is going to progress as we go on and i just wanted you to hang out throughout the whole time so i wanted to give the most amount of value towards the end of the video and so here's what i want to say about health health is extremely important but we complain about grocery prices. We complain about things that are great for us, but we don't think twice about things that are terrible for us. I just want you to really think about that. We don't think about how bad it is to sit on the couch all day watching TV for us. We don't think twice about door dashing some unhealthy meals from McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's or Carl's Jr or Hardee's, depending on where you're at in the world. But then you see something for $50 in the grocery store that's actually healthy for you. You're like, ah, that's too much. And I gotta cook this. It's, it's just crazy to me. It's actually more expensive to not prioritize your health than it is to prioritize your health. Because when you don't prioritize your health, health conditions pop up. And when it rains, it pours. And it could be that a little habit that you're doing, remember when I said every little bit counts when it comes to building your net worth and being financially stable in my last video, where I talk about you do not need a lot of money to be financially stable? Well, the thing is, it only takes a little bit consistently for your health to go to complete crap. And so if you prioritize your health and you pay a little extra for the healthier options and you take a little more time to cook said healthier options and you take the time to exercise and take care of your health, you will spend far less money in the hospital, at the doctor's office, at the dentist's office than you would if you didn't prioritize your health. That's all I'm saying. Number 18, you do not care what other people think. This is my favorite thing ever. This is a line I've lived by ever since I was in high school. I just never understood why people cared so much about what other people thought. I'm like, dude, I am living for me. I am not living for you. I was not put on this earth to give a crap about what other people think, especially if it's someone that you wanna be nothing like. I never, ever understood that. It makes no sense. And the reason I bring this up in this video is specifically because a lot of bad financial decisions are made because we want other people to think of us higher than we really are. 
And here's an example. And this is a lighthearted example, but uh, one time me and I think like four or five coworkers were walking out of the building and we just so happened to be walking near my car. We were near all of our cars, like in a little circle area. I'm, I'm pretty high up at my job. And the guy I was talking to expected me to have like a way nicer car than I have. He was like, oh man, Reggie, is that your, your truck right there? And it was a super nice Ford F-250. I was like, nah, man, this, my car is back here. And then uh, for reference, I drive a Hyundai Accent 2013. It's a small, simple car, gets the job done. I've had it since I was 20. But he, he looked at it, he was like, he was like, oh, like almost like shocked. And I, I didn't take no offense to it. He didn't mean anything offensive by it, but that just, that just goes to show, right? Like when a lot of people make money, they're like, okay, I got this promotion. I'm gonna go ahead and get me that BMW, that Audi, that Mercedes. It's always the German vehicles that people go for. For some reason, they are nice, but the maintenance is, is crazy. That's a whole different story for another day. But I'm just not like that. And the reason that a lot of people would get eaten up by lifestyle inflation or lifestyle creep, whatever you wanna call it, is simply because they care about what other people think. They wanna be able to say things like, I bought a house, I upgraded my apartment, I got a new car, I just got new wheels for my car, I just got this nice suit, I just upgraded the living room. And all those things are great. I think you should definitely go for doing those things if they're what you want to do, but you have to do it at the right time when you can actually afford to do it. So many of us do it when we can't afford to do it. And because of that, it causes us and literally forces us to work harder than if we just stayed in our lane and let the money continue to grow. And then once it hits a certain point, which I talk about in several of my videos, that's when you're like, okay, now I'm going to do this thing that I've been wanting to do. So yeah, don't care about what other people think. Care about what you think and what you want to do. And you'd be surprised at how at how much wiser your decisions get. Last but not least, number 20, thank you for hanging out this long. If you have stuck around this long in the video, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put the word wealth in the comment section with as many explanation marks that you want to put beside it. Just because I think it would be a fun thing to do. Just so I know you made it this far. But last but not least, number 20, you read up on personal finances and you educate yourself because that is one thing that was a game changer for me. If I don't know something, there's no way I can learn for myself. I can try, I can crunch numbers, I can take a sheet of paper out, I can take out a calculator, but if I hadn't read up on personal finances, I never would have learned about investing. I never would have learned different systems that you could put together for saving. I never would have learned about high yield savings accounts. I never would have learned about debt strategies or anything like that. Just because when it came to personal finances, when I was like 20 years old, I was not that smart. It, it was just as simple as that. All I knew about personal finances was, well, Hold on to, to some of your money and, and spend some of your money. That was all I knew. I didn't know the different strategies and methods and all how deep the rabbit hole of personal finance gets. I had no idea. And so I read and I read and I watched videos and I read some more. And the more I learned, I, I just became like a sponge and I wrote things down and I tried things and some things worked and some things didn't. But that's the thing about personal finance is it's personal. So some things are not going to be a one size fits all thing. I love Dave Ramsey, but you know what I'm saying? Not all of his advice applies to my life life for my goals so I don't I didn't use all of his advice I wrote my own book because based off of my experience and based off of my lens this is what works best for me and I put it together for all of you watching this video if you want to check it out I will link it up here it's also down in the description if you want to pick it up but no matter where you get the information from you've got to soak up as much information as possible and this would be a great channel to start simply because I have well over 300 videos, not to mention the simple fact that I've compiled every single financially stable video into a playlist and all my wealth journey videos into a playlist. I'm starting to create multiple playlists that are specific to certain portions of my audience's situation. That was a hard sentence to say. If it was not grammatically correct, do not come from me in the comments or do. I'm sure it would be an interesting conversation, but yeah. And that's for anything in life. Educate yourself, learn from someone who knows what they're doing. That's for everything in life. You cannot figure out everything on your own. Even if you are an extremely smart person, there is something that you don't know in life and you have to humble yourself and learn from someone else. And honestly, it shouldn't even be that hard to do because there are so many people in this world that have a lot of knowledge that don't know that you don't know certain things that they do. And, and they would be more than willing to sit down with you and show you how it's done, just like me. 
So anyway, that is the video for today. Those are the signs that you're financially stable, even if you don't feel like you are. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and I will see you in the next video.